don't want that there. All right, so in this case, we got to go back to follow our steps. If you guys look at it, the first step in solving a quadratic equation is set your equation equal to 0. My equation is not equal to 0. You, what you want to do is get all of your terms on the same side and make it set equal to 0. If your equation is set equal to f of x, replace f of x with 0. If your equation is set equal to y, replace y with 0. When we have a quadratic equation, when there's two variables. See, when there's only that one variable, we could just undo everything and solve, right? But now we have two variables. So we can't just take the, divide by 8 and take the square root, because we have two of them, all right? So whenever you have two variables, an x squared and an x, we have to use factoring. And to do that, we have to set it first equal to 0. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a 24x to both sides. When I do that, I obtain 8x squared plus 24x equals 0. Everybody follow me from there. Now we have our equation set equal to 0. So now what we're going to do is we're going to factor out the GCF, basically what we'll call our greatest common factor. What we're going to do is the greatest common factor, the number that divides evenly into 8x squared and 24x. Anybody want to offer up? Yes? 8x. So 8x is your common, greatest common factor. Because 8x divides into 8x squared x times, and it divides into 24 three times. Right? And if you don't know if you did it right, always go back and check your answer. 8x, you can apply to distributive property. 8x times x is 8x squared. 8x times 3 is 24x. Now, why is this so important? What did factoring do? Factoring basically took our equation and rewrote it as the product of two expressions. So now, since we have the product of two expressions, we can now apply the zero product property. And what the zero product property states is when you have the product of two expressions equal to 0, that's why having it equal to 0 is so important. When you have it equal to 0, you can set them both equal to 0. So now, we break it apart. We set each expression equal to 0. And now we can just go ahead and solve. And you guys should be going you know to solve here x equals 0, minus 3, minus 3. x equals negative 3. Solution set, 0, negative 3. Cool? Kind of? A little bit? OK. Everybody's nodding until we get to trinomials where a is not equal to 1. But 